Time is precious. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences, their frequency and their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences, their intensity, their frequency. When my friend Mark died at age 44, someone says, that's young to die. But what if he lived four lifetimes in one? It might not be too young. Whatever the span of your life turns out to be, here's what you want to fill it up with, experiences and the intensity of those experiences. But now let's talk about the management of time. Now, jot this down, approaches to the management of time. Here's the first one. Ignore the subject. I mean, that's good advice. Don't let anything overly bug you. Because remember now, you don't have to do anything. Someone says, well, I've got to get a handle on my time. And the answer is, no, you don't. If you want to let it all go, you can let it all go. I mean, this is good advice. Somebody says, you ought, you ought, you ought. Jot this down. Ignore all the you oughts or you should. Only if they're giving general information. We should. It's better to say if you're teaching, we should. Not you should. We should. Then you let me listen in without it being too confrontational. If everyone did this, see, that'd be great. And then you give a person a chance to choose to do it or not to do it. But when you start the you ought, you ought, now see if I don't, now see we've got some tension and maybe some problems. So you ought seem to always create problems. Because this is personal dignity. And you don't want to destroy someone's dignity by doing all the oughts and they feel reluctant to do it. Now we've got problems. So if you want to, just ignore this subject on time management. Now, here's the next one. Step down to something easier. The guy's in sales and he says, oh, I want to own the company. Finally owns the company. Now he's got no time to play golf. He said, when I was in sales, I was making big money playing golf three days a week. Heck with this owning something. Heck with managing. My life was never my own after I started to manage. I'm going back to sales. See, this is the key. If you're getting too pressed, you might consider stepping down to something with a little easier time pressure. Little girl says to her mother, Daddy comes home, brings his briefcase and pats me on the head and says hello, disappears and works on his papers. How come my daddy doesn't play with me? And her mother said, look, your daddy loves you very much, but he's so busy at work, he can't get it all done, he has to bring it home. He loves you, but that's why he can't play with you. And the little girl said, why don't they just put him in a slower group? (laughs) So... Jot this down now. If you don't have time for your kids, you might consider joining a slower group. Remember when I said some things I went for cost me too much? So reconsider. Next key to time management. And that's work longer and harder. But see, there's a limit to that. I almost lost my health the first year. I went so crazy about personal development and achievement. I just went bonkers. You know, I told you I was skinny. By the end of that first year, I was a walking shadow. And then it suddenly occurred to me, what if I got rich and too ill to spend it? I mean, that was a shocker. So I started developing a little more reasonable. Because I said, if 12 hours won't do it, I'll work 14. If that won't do it, I'll work 18. I mean, how many hours it takes. And sure enough, it cost me too much. So, see, working longer and harder for some might be appropriate. You know, if you're just sitting around not doing that much, this might be good, work longer and harder. But you can only work so hard. Here's the key, not to work harder, but smarter. When you've worked as hard as you can, doing the best you can in terms of physical output in the time, reasonable time. Now, here's the ultimate in the management of time, and that is you simply become more skillful. When I first got into sales, you know, I was around people that could get, you know, nine out of ten, eight out of ten. And when I first started, I could only get one out of ten. But here's what I did. I worked around the clock, around the clock, so that I would make up in numbers what I lacked in skill. That's good in sales. You got to jot that down. When you're new, you make up in numbers what you lack in skill. Now, when you become more skillful, the numbers can go down because now 
your persuasive ability and all of that is now so high that you don't need to put as many numbers out. But at first, if you want to compete or if you want to really get good, you've got to put in the numbers. But if you get more from yourself, develop more of yourself, now the time management becomes an easier task. Now, here's the next thing. Either you run the project or it runs you. I've found out when you start something, at first you're in charge. All of a sudden, a year later, it's in charge. Some of the companies I started, I'm telling you, I'm in control. A couple of years later, I'm out of control. At first, I've got it on the run. Two years later, it's got me on the run. Haven't got enough time. I'm dizzy with trying to get it all done. So here's part of the key, and that's to get in charge. It's easy to start something. First thing you know, you're out of control. It's in control. The enterprise you get started now runs you ragged. Because I did that when I had the whole 13 offices and the big entourage. I'm telling you, it was like short nights and long days and just sort of the never-ceasing demand for time and activity, which was fine. At that time in my life, it was fine and created a lot of good results and laid some good foundation for a lot of future careers that came from those unique times. It was a pretty long list of people who were inspired by it and educated by it and participated in that program I had going. But then I rechanged the format to sort of rearrange my own life personally, which has paid off for me. Now I have a heavy workload, but if you finally get to the place where you have most everything done for you, I still farm in Idaho, but I'm what's known as a gentleman farmer. A gentleman farmer gives orders and other people do the work. It's different than being a farmer doing the work yourself. I know that because I was raised in the farm country where I still have my farm, but now I have the luxury of participants who look after my agriculture, look after my home building, my daughter looks after all of my accounts and my residences and my real estate, and I have good partners in business. That's extra luxury, where you can do your specialty and other people working make it valuable. 